In the previous slide of ovary, we described all the various stages of follicular development up until the final pre-ovulatory follicle called the graphene follicle. The graphene follicle was loaded with granulosa cells, which secrete estrogen under the influence of FSH and LH from the pituitary. After ovulation, that same follicle then develops into a structure called the corpus luteum, which can be thought of as a graphene follicle after ovulation. The corpus luteum is also very, very, very endocrinologically active, but instead of having granulosa cells, it has luteal cells. It is a very, very, very vascular structure. It's composed primarily of these very foamy cells which contain steroid hormones, uh, which is why they always look yellow, which is why it's called corpus luteum, because luteum is the Latin word for yellow. And this is typically the luteal cells of the corpus luteum, and that's our highest power. And they have rather round or vesicular nuclei and a lot of granular, sometimes slightly foamy cytoplasm. And these are all luteal cells. Of course, you know that's not, you know that's a blood vessel. And you know that's a blood vessel, and that's a blood vessel, and that is, and that is too. But these are basically all luteal cells. Corpus luteum, uh, if there is a pregnancy, can be a very significant fraction of the volume of the ovary itself, perhaps a third or a half. Otherwise, they generally are just a small fraction of the volume of the ovary. And as you can see here, uh, they can have a lot of hemorrhage like you can see here, because they are very vascular. And in this particular corpus luteum, it looks like there is a central liquefaction, which is why there's no luteal tissue in here. But the endocrinologically active cells are these foamy cells all along here. Sure, there's a little connective tissue and a lot of blood vessels in between them. And then there's a lot of fibrous tissue uh, towards the outside. There's probably a lot of hemorrhage towards the inside. And this is uh, the world's most classic corpus luteum. Because it's so big, I suspect this was a corpus luteum of pregnancy, the primary producer of progesterone to support the pregnancy and the placenta, primarily under the influence of pituitary LH, or luteinizing hormone, which stimulates these corpus luteum cells. And I thank you very much.